गुड इवनिंग हेलो गुड इवनिंग हाउ आर यू वी आर स्टिल वेटिंग फॉर मोर पीपल राइट या या वी शुड वी शुड वेट फॉर पीपल टुडे यू नो व्हाट वी आर नंगा मीटिंग इफ वी स्टार्ट इन 6 एस इफ इट्स 6:30 हां ओके yeah i think that's why they have not joined but i guess within the next 10 minutes at least around 5 we love joint and then we start the session okay i was on a call sorry ha ah, all right no problem okay
Hello, good evening, everyone. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session on effective communication. Uh, we will start the session at 6.30, so that you may give time for other students. So kindly be patient and uh, maybe, Maybe if you want to do an introduction, you can just say your name and maybe what you love doing and what you hate doing as we give time for others to join. So anyone can unmute and then we start by introduction by what's your name, what you love doing and what you hate doing. So I am Katile Mutuku. I am the director of Barrier Breakers with the initiative and I love serving people and I hate anything that intimidates me or anyone who intimidates me. So that's me. So we can go on with David. David, you can just un unmute and say your name, what you like and what you eat. <laughs> okay, we can go to Dennis. Um, hi. Hello. Okay, my name is Dennis um, from Nairobi. Um, what I like is I like uh, reading a lot and uh, getting to explore new new things. Right now, I'm getting into something. Okay, most people know machine learning and data analytics. Um, what I do hate mostly is uh, <laughs> that's that stuff. Uh, what I hate is I hate people who are arrogant and ignorant at what what others do and take life for granted. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dennis. Uh, we can hear from Patricia. Patricia. Yes, hi. Hello. Uh, sorry, maybe you could uh, ask again. I don't know what you guys are talking about. 
Uh, you can just say your name, what you like, and what you ate. My name is Patricia from Western Bungoma County. Oh, I like sports, football. Wow. Hey. I hate, I hate, I, hate, I think I hate lies. Someone who tells lies, pretenders, okay, let me say like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Uh, um, thank you so much for that short session, I think. I know most people is in after 6.30 and the session may take too long or maybe too short. So I think without wasting time, I, I think without wasting time, I can introduce the speaker and then we will start the session off and then others, the, as they are joining, they will find us as we are continuing. So today's topic is session four on effective communication, and we will be talking on interpersonal skills. And our speaker today is Esther Kiragu, who is a writer. She's an editor and communication consultant with eight years of experience. She has previously worked at Parents Magazine as a writer, sub-editor, editorial coordinator, and associate editor spearheading content development and media relationship. A style of, of, of communication has a strong focus on first understanding the needs of the audience and then addressing those needs by communicating a language that the audience understands and connects best, best with them. In her capacity, Esther as a communication consultant has previous, previously provided editorial services for various organizations including Akili Dada, Zizi Afrig, and Blue Wave Insurance. So together with a colleague in the communication profession, Esther runs a weekly series on digital media dubbed hashtag Kenya Women Series. That's so wonderful, where she amplifies voices of women doing phenomenal work by telling their stories. She also leads communication-related sessions at the Network for Women in Media and PR in Kenya. Esther has a master's degree in communication studies from University of Nairo, the University of Nairobi and a bachelor's education in English and literature from Kenyatta University. So welcome so much. Esther will be a trainer on effective communication and more so in interpersonal skills. So sorry for the delay and I know others will join as you're going on. So welcome so much, Esther. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here with you uh, and to take you through this session today on uh, interpersonal skills in uh, communication. I know we have just begun. We are about, I think, three of us, but uh, as I'm told, others will join us as we go on. And so I'll do a, a presentation. Uh, I'll talk through the presentation, uh, just taking you through uh, the various aspects of it. And then at the end of the day, uh, if there are questions, then I can address Q&A. So if you allow me, I'll share my screen. Just give me a few. I share my screen. Katila, am I able to share the screen? Have you enabled me as a, to be able yeah. to share? Yeah, yeah. Mm. It tells me only the host can share. Let me put you as an host. Yeah. You can share now. OK. 
Okay. Um, let me know if you can see my screen. Are you able to see my screen from your end? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Okay, great. All right. Um, so we'll begin. So the topic of the day is uh, effective communication. And what we are dealing with is interpersonal skills. And like uh, I was introduced, my name is Esther Kiragu and I'll take you through the session. So the way I intend to take the session is um, I'll address four issues and then we'll do a Q&A. So I'll begin with just a basic understanding of interpersonal skills and then the elements uh, of interpersonal skills and how they enhance uh, effective communication. And then in the importance of interpersonal skills, you know, why is it that uh, interpersonal skills is uh, necessary? And then I'll talk about how to develop interpersonal skills. Um, and then I'll take a Q&A in case there are any questions that arise either from the presentation or from your personal experiences. Okay. And so I'll begin at um, understanding I'll begin with understand, uh, sorry, with what are interpersonal skills. So uh, like just the, the way the word goes, interpersonal skills, you'll notice there are two elements here. There's the interpersonal part of it, and then there's the skills part of it. So when somebody says that uh, somebody is skilled in something, you know, it means that they are an expert or they are good or great at something. So by that definition itself, it means that skills, if you're an expert or you're good at doing something, meaning that you have a skill in it, it means that these are things that can be learned. They don't necessarily have to be something that you were born with. Huh? It means that this is something that anybody can learn. A skill uh, is learned, you know, it's transferable so you can acquire it through learning. And then the interpersonal part of it means something that is linked with relationships with people. And so interpersonal skills definitely will mean that there's relationships between two or more people that will be involved here. And so by the definition, the first definition is that um, interpersonal skills are traits that make you communicate and interact well with others and uh, they involve the ability to communicate and build relationships with others because you cannot be in relationships so interpersonal skills help cement that am i clear katile please let me know if i'm clear yeah. uh, i just got an alert that my internet is not stable Am I breaking? Can you hear me clearly? Yeah. You can? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so I'll go on. So like I was saying that uh, it's difficult to build a relationship with other people without that interpersonal skill because it cements that. And even when you're communicating, it helps with that. And often you'll notice that interpersonal skills, they are referred to as people skills, or sometimes you'll hear in certain scenarios that they are referred to as social skills. Why? Because human beings by nature, we are social beings. We like relating with others. And because interpersonal skills are linked with relating with other people, then they are often called people skills or, personal skill, or uh, social skills. And uh, they form very good, uh, a very important um, part of our everyday communication. It doesn't matter whether you're in the workplace, whether it's with your family, whether it is with friends, interpersonal skills really come into play anytime you're communicating, regardless of the relationship, whether it's a formal one or an informal one. So one of the things that you'll notice is 
at the very core of any great communication uh, is the authenticity on the authenticity. Uh, and that means for you to be an effective communicator, your interpersonal skills must portray communication that is truthful, that is sincere, that is empathetic. And, you know, and these three, they bring out that authenticity, that it is, it is real, something authentic is real. And uh, the thing with communication is that uh, it's, uh, communication is very, um, is very personal in the sense that you can almost feel when the other person is, is not being truthful, is not being sincere, they're not being empathetic. You can tell when somebody's communication is not authentic. And uh, just to, to give an example of public figures who have poor uh, interpersonal skills, you'll find that um, because this, sometimes we have leaders or people who are just in the public limelight, and they are, they, are, they, are, they are meant to communicate to an audience, but you can feel that they are in, their communication is not authentic because it's not truthful, it's not sincere, you know, it's not empathetic. And uh, the problem with that is every time they communicate, people will tend to feel like they're not connecting with these people. If it's a leader, people will feel like they're not connecting. You've probably heard of people saying that, uh, I feel like this leader does not, know the issues on the ground because even the way they communicate uh, there's no that personal touch that they are aware of the things that are happening on the ground even the way they speak is not sincere they don't seem to empathize with the issues on the ground they're not truthful and uh, i think even a latest one if we just recall um uh, pra uh, trump's presidency was mad with a lot of um, you know, and, and sincere or untruthful uh, uh, communication. And sometimes even people could feel that he's not empathetic with the situation. Uh, and so sometimes now when that happens with leaders, it uh, or even anybody in a public figure, you could be even a leader in an organization, then it means you really need to work on your interpersonal skills. That is how important it is. It comes into play even in your leadership. So excellent interpersonal skills are essential life skills. It doesn't matter whether you're interacting with another individual as a friend, whether it's with a family, with colleagues, with customers or clients, uh, interpersonal skill is essential. And I'll just give a personal example of my experience as a writer. When I began writing, uh, unbelievably, I was very shy and uh, laid back. And uh, for me, I wasn't very keen about developing my interpersonal skills because I always thought as a writer, I mean, you're not really in the public limelight in terms of speaking, you know, your work speaks through you. You, you express yourself better through writing. And so I always thought that, you know, I don't need to, to, to build any of those relationships until I realized that uh, with interpersonal skills, you need to build them even if you think you're in a career that is very, uh, that is not in the public, you know, you're not interacting much with people because now what happens as a writer is you need to approach people, you need to get stories. Sometimes you even need to pitch ideas in an organization, whether it's in a magazine, in a newspaper, or you need to sell your idea to an editor. And so that means that Either way, your interpersonal skills will come into play. And it just shows that regardless of how you think that uh, your, your career is not one where you know, you're always at the forefront, it means that interpersonal skills still come into play. And uh, if you're working in any organization, even if you're working like me as a consultant, where, where that means basically I work for myself, it, this interpersonal skill is still essential because you'll tend to work with a, with a team. Even when I win a consultancy, you know, if, if I bid for a consultancy and win in an organization, there is that element where I have to work with other people. And teamwork just means that I need to, they need to trust me and I need to trust them. We need to be respectful of each other and we need to care in the sense that if they want a meeting today, and for one reason or another, I'm not available, maybe I'm unwell, at least I can feel that care from the organization. 
And so if without interpersonal skills, then it becomes even difficult to, to work together and as a team. And the beauty of developing interpersonal skills is that they can determine how far you go in life because this is about relating with other people. And one of the things that you'll come to realize is that uh, negotiation is a key element of interpersonal skills. And if you're a good negotiator, then you can be able to determine how far you go in life. You can negotiate through relationships, you can negotiate money, you can negotiate business deals, and that really helps. So interpersonal skill uh, could also mean more money for you. A, a well-developed interpersonal skill means could also mean more money for you on the table. Uh, if you go for a job interview, then you know how to you know how to negotiate better. All right, so I'll move to the next one. So interpersonal skills always feel easy when you're communicating with people who you know, people who you share the same values, the same perspectives, the same goals, the same interests, the same beliefs. You know, it, it will feel easy. I mean, it, when you think about people who you care and love, uh, and love, it is a bit easier to communicate with them with ease. But what happens when you meet the opposite? When you meet people with different interests from yours? When you meet people who have different belief systems from yours? You know, when you meet people who have a different perspective, they don't see things the way you see. That is where your interpersonal skills will be most challenged. Because the default of human beings is that when we are faced with this situation, it feels like a conflict. So what do we do? We avoid, you know, you don't want to interact with that because I mean, who wants to keep on brushing shoulders with somebody? But the thing is the way life presents itself, it's very unlikely that all the time you will find people who you share the same beliefs, the same values, the same perspective, the same goals, the same interest, it's very difficult. Uh, because think about even a work situation. You have people with different personalities. Some have different values from yours, different goals, different perspectives. They don't see things like you see. They have a different belief system from yours. So, and yet you need to interact with these people, work with them for your every day, meet, uh, meet targets together, so it means either way you have to, uh, to learn how to maneuver around this. And I think one of the best examples I can give of how I see uh, us get often, everybody getting into, or majority of us getting into situation where we meet people who are the opposite of us and so our interpersonal skills are challenged is in social media. When somebody tweets something that you totally don't agree with, or sometimes even you, you tweet something that you, you, you believe, but the other person who reacts or comments on that uh, thread is somebody who doesn't believe in what you said. They think what you said is actually lies or, you know, or is not even worth of a comment. And they come there to argue. And often, uh, our interpersonal skills get challenged there because what I've noticed is a lot of people, instead of coming there to give facts and to give their, their side of view or why they believe that comment is right or wrong, we often result to insults, you know, that by insulting you, I'm trying to shut you out from even understanding you or even trying to, to make meaning of your communication, instead of me uh, coming there to you and giving you a sequence of facts. So our interpersonal skills will feel easy when you meet people with the sh who have shared beliefs, shared goals, shared interests. But when the opposite happens, it will be challenged. So interpersonal skills, they tend to uh, incorporate one, your personality, and two, how you've learned to handle certain situations. And like I said, because it is a skill, it is learned. Meaning you don't have an excuse by saying that, uh, you know me, I'm not good in interpersonal skills because I wasn't born with this skill. There's no excuse for that because this is a learned skill. Meaning that if you take the time, 
you can learn. So personality therefore is not an excuse for poor interpersonal skills. And at the same time, personality is not a guarantee for good interpersonal skills. And this is what I mean. You'll notice like with personalities, people tend to be on two spectrums. They are either introverts or they are extroverts. And there's usually an assumption that if you're an introvert, then automatically it means you're bad or poor in interpersonal skills. And if you're an extrovert, meaning you're outgoing, you know, you, you interact easily with people, then it means that that's a guarantee that you have good interpersonal skills, but that's not true. There are people who are introverts, meaning they enjoy their own company, they are more quiet, and yet they have great interpersonal skills. And others are extrovert, meaning they enjoy that external interaction with others, but still they are poor in interpersonal skills. So uh, introverts, you'll, you'll notice they tend to be shy. They love to be by themselves, meaning you know, they enjoy their own company. They can be loners. When you're in, uh, you know, in a forum with them, either as a group or even two people, they hardly initiate or start conversations. And uh, sometimes when you ask them why they do that, they'll say either they don't think that uh, other people have similar interests from them, you know, they'll say like, ah, me, I don't, I don't see like people have the same interest as me. So there's no room for striking a conversation. Uh, some actually it's because they are afraid to be on the limelight, you know, nobody wants to be on the spotlight. Uh, some, some of those people, you literally have to mention their names for them to, uh, to even if you're in a group and you want them to speak, you literally have to call out their names. They won't, um, they won't just volunteer to be the ones to, to give information or to speak. And then when you ask them some, they'll say, I don't have anything to contribute in the conversation. That's why I don't initiate conversation, but that's not true. There's something called six degrees of se separation. It means that on average, we are six or fewer uh, in terms of social connections away from each other. That, for instance, if it's me and Katile, you could find that we are just six people away from knowing a common person. Like if she interacted with me, she would, uh, she would find that um, there's somebody in my network who apparently she knows. And that already there is an opportunity to begin a conversation. And sometimes they don't speak out loud uh, or you know, they don't develop their interpersonal skills because there's a mental block. You know, that mental block of thinking that, you know, people don't have similar interests with me, so I don't need to have conversations with them or develop that interpersonal skills. And then another thing is that uh, the conversations they have in their head that conversation that you have with yourself in your head is very important. The things that you tell yourself, you know, the way that maybe we can in this be in this group, uh, we are asked a question, but all of us keep quiet. And then we say, you know, Katile will just answer. Those kind of uh, conversations are left for Katile and the likes, you know? So that is a conversation that you tell yourself. Or sometimes you think that you don't have anything to contribute because of what you tell yourself. But the truth is all of us have something to contribute. So another thing is that uh, most of them, most of people who are uh, introverts, you know, or people who have not developed uh, good in, uh, interpersonal skills, you will notice at the beginning of a conversation, they'll start by an apology or an excuse. So if you remember, I don't know what era most of you grew up in, but I remember, uh, I don't know if you, you do remember the same. Uh, for instance, when people are in social functions and somebody uh, sings, some people would say, don't listen to, to, to my voice, listen to my words. But automatically what that does is that you draw attention to people, to the very thing that you're telling them not to listen to, you know? And so because most introverts are shy, you know, or they hardly want to initiate conversation. If you begin by saying, I'm sorry, but I'm not usually very good with interacting with others, automatically 
you've already drawn attention to people focusing on how you're not good at interacting with others. So don't begin a conversation by giving an apology or giving an excuse because that will draw people to attention to the struggles that you don't even want people to know about. So this is just a demonstration of how sometimes our personalities come into play and uh, they hinder us from having developed uh, good interpersonal skills. So this is introverts, let's see extroverts. So extroverts, they tend to be the life of the party. They love attention. They will easily initiate conversations. If you start a conversation right now, or even right now in the group, if I ask a question, you know, they will even volunteer to answer even before I pick out their names. But like I said, personality is not an excuse for poor interpersonal skills. And it's also not a guarantee for good interpersonal skills. In the sense that just because you are an extrovert, meaning that you can easily initiate conversation, does not mean that you have good interpersonal skills. Because what happens with most extroverts is that they lack proper active listening skills. And so they are impatient. They want you to get to the point very quickly and then they can draw back attention to themselves. Why? Because they love attention. They don't mind being in the limelight, but that does not show good interpersonal skills because you must be mindful of the other people who are also in the, in the conversation. If it is a group, you can't be the one domineering and dominating all the conversations. There must be room to allow other people to be part of that. That is what we call good teamwork. You can't be that the entire, nine, if you are doing a job that 90% was only done by you and you are a team of five. What happens to the other five? Even if they were shy, did you try to pull them in? You know, did you try to listen to their opinion? So one of the ways of developing uh, interpersonal skills uh, in communication is ensuring that there's good teamwork. So listen to the other people, even as much as you talk. So even when you're initiating conversations, you can initiate the conversation, but at some point give room to the other person to also give feedback or to also contribute to the conversation. So I think that uh, summarizes the, the first part of the you know, of the presentation. So the second part, I just want to touch on elements of interpersonal skills that enhance effective communication. Because remember the topic we said was effective communication, uh, but we're focusing on interpersonal skills. So how does, how are these elements in interpersonal skills? What are they and how do they enhance effective communication? And so you'll notice are valuable interpersonal skills for your career. So this is a, a you know an image that I borrowed from uh, the Balance. It's, it's a publication, an online publication that just highlights uh, some of the interpersonal skills that are you know are good for your career. So these are elements within the interpersonal skills that are very valuable for your career. So I talked about active listening. So active listening means listening not with the intention to respond, but with the intention to, to, to hear the other person and what it is they are saying. And many of us assume that we are good listeners, but what happens is that sometimes even when the other person is speaking, we interject, you know, we cut you short even in the middle of the sentence that you were saying, because we want to respond. Huh? So that means we are not active listeners. Active listeners means just cleanly paying attention to what the other person is saying and listening with the sake of listening to understand and not listening to respond. And then caring, this is a, a valuable thing. You can only show uh, that you care if you understand or try to understand the other individuals who are in the conversation with you. And then leadership, uh, if you're leading and assisting others by examples, then your interpersonal skills come into play there. Uh, motivation, are you able to inspire others, to encourage others? Are you responsible? Can you be given a task and carry it through? 
And then do you work well with a team? Are you able to forge alliances with other people, you know, work together based on mutual trust uh, and based on um, respect for each other? So these elements in interpersonal skills, you'll notice they are so crucial in any career development. If you've gone for interviews, sometimes you'll notice there's a set of questions that they ask you because they're trying to bring out this interpers these elements within interpersonal skills. Like they'll tell us, uh, describe to us a, a, a situation or an event where you are able to work well as a team. What are they trying to do? They're just basically trying to understand if these elements come out well in your interpersonal skills. So you'll notice there are questions that will always be thrown on leadership, you know, on teamwork, or on your ability to, you know, to understand other people and to carry everybody as a team when you're working together. So there's a way HR tries to bring these as part of the conversation so that they can, uh, they can be able to decipher that uh, you really do have uh, interpersonal skills that are fully fledged. So I'll move to the next slide. So the next slide just highlights some other uh, skills. So self-awareness, do you know yourself? Do you know your skills? Do you know the things that you're, you have a strength in? You know, conflict management and resolution skills. All this, by the way, are all part of interpersonal skills because if you are able to relate well with others, you'll know how to manage uh, conflict. And co conflicts are bound to happen everywhere. If you're working with people, even if you're living with people, just think even about your family. There are always a conflict. And if you have good interpersonal skills where you're able to relate well with others, then you'll find a way to manage this. And I'll just give an example about conflict management. One of the things that happens with conflict management is everybody wants to show that they are right and the other person is wrong. And one, one small little thing that is part of interpersonal skills that can help in conflict management and uh, resolving issues is just listening, hearing out the other person because everybody wants to feel that they have been heard. Instead of putting your foot down and just thinking that it is your view that is correct, just listening to the other person can help to diffuse the situation. You know, trying to empathize and understand where this other person is coming from. Listening well, you know, I, I talked about active listening. Networking and building relationships. You cannot be able to network and build relationships if you do not have good interpersonal skills. And the thing about networking and building relationships that, is that some of the networks you build and the relationships that you create, they propel you in life. So that's how important interpersonal skills come into play. Then negotiation skills. Every day is a negotiation. You are always negotiating, negotiating to get into a public vehicle, you know, negotiating with, with the receptionist who is at the desk because you want, um, you want to be given an appointment somewhere. It, it, everything is about negotiation. You go to the market, you want to purchase something, the price is high, but you need this thing. So you're trying to negotiate, you know, and come to a, a mutual understanding. Public speaking and presentation skills, that comes into play. Because even as you speak publicly, are you audible? What, uh, what, what uh, communication are you giving even? Uh, you know, not just verbally, but if, but even what 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 is your what are your gestures communicating? What is your facial expression communicating? So teamwork and also leadership. These are elements all within interpersonal skills that come into play, and that's how you know that sometimes when you you go even into an organization, you can be able to almost pick out who is the leader before you are even told that this is the leader of the of the of the organization or of the team because of even their interpersonal skills. So it just really shows how crucial interpersonal skills are. Okay, I'll move to the next 
I'll move to the next slide. Mm, just a second. So we'll go to the importance of interpersonal skills. So why are we really insisting about this interpersonal skill? Why is it even important? Why do we need to cultivate it? I mean, in our communication, why, why is it even necessary? So I found this uh, fact really uh, intriguing that most hiring managers, they make their final hiring decision based on soft skill. And interpersonal skill is soft skill. So the, the thing is that when you go into an interview, you'll notice that they will ask about your technical skills. Technical skills tend to be what you went to school for. So if you trained as a communicator, if you trained as an engineer, you know, if you trained as a public relations, uh, uh, in public relations. So these are your technical skills, the things that you trained for. So if you're in an interview, and uh, the hiring manager or the HR, they have narrowed down to two good candidates or three good candidates. They tend to make their final decision based on soft skill because all of you could have gone through, they, they required a degree, all of you have that degree. All of you, maybe they, they need somebody with five or less years, maybe two to five years of experience. The three of you, you have the two to five years of experience in working. So how do they make their final decision? using soft skill. So a LinkedIn survey of 291 HR managers shows that interpersonal skills are both important and they're hard to find. And often that is usually the final decision that is usually used uh, by a HR practitioner. And 59% of managers, they reported that they have trouble finding people with the right soft skills. Like since interpersonal skills falls under soft skills, that just shows you that if 59% of managers reported they have trouble uh, finding candidates who have the right soft skills, then it means the candidates who have these right soft skills, they tend to do well in life because you see, it's not common for people to have them. But like I said, because skills are learned, you have no excuse. There's plenty of opportunity for you to learn. It, you don't have to have, uh, you know, to, it's, not, it's not one of those things that you need to, to, to be born with. You can actually learn and it can make a difference in your life. So uh, this is another one that shows the top 10 in demand soft skills. So you can see communication is, 57.9%. So when HR are hiring, 50, uh, communication skills is at the almost at the very, actually are almost at the very top of what they look for. Organization, organization just means organization skills. Like, are you able to organize yourself, organize your time? You know, if you have three tasks that need to be done, are you able to do that? So, but I'll, I'll jump, I'll just skim through the other. So teamwork as well. Uh, you know, are you able to work well with others? Are you always punctual? Timekeeping is something. Critical thinking, because the thing is, you'll find that not everything that we went to school and learned will find it in the workplace. Because workplace is always changing, you need to be a critical thinker. If there's a problem that arises, can you think on your feet and solve it? Social skills, do you work well with other people? Do you have social skills? Do you interact well? Can the manager send you? Uh, to, you know, to a breakfast meeting somewhere to represent the organization and to interact with the people there. You know, are you creative? Can you think and come up with creative solutions? Interpersonal communication, what we are talking about. Adaptability, if you're faced with a difficult situation, can you quickly adapt there? And then friendly personality, are you somebody who's friendly to other people? So if you notice, number eight, interpersonal communication or interpersonal skills, they are at 55% of the top in demand soft skills. So that just tells you how much we need, we all need to put into effort interpersonal skills. So the importance of uh, interpersonal skills is that it gives you higher chances in a job or career. I mean, like I said, if you have gone for an interview, all of us have the same technical expertise and the HR needs to make a decision between two of us, they look for soft skills. So both when people have been hired and even when people have been promoted, you have a higher chance if you've developed your interpersonal skills. 
So another uh, uh, importance of interpersonal skills is that it helps you to develop meaningful and authentic relationships with others. You realize we need meaningful and authentic relationships with others everywhere we go. Whether you're in school, whether you're working, everywhere you go, the importance of meaningful and authentic relationship is key. It helps you to forge partnerships that are beneficial, e.g. business. You'll notice that people give business to people they know. And so one of the ways of knowing people so that you're given business is to develop interpersonal skills so that you forge relationships with them, forge partnership, have a conversation with them, develop a relationship with them so that the next time you know, they have business, they remember, oh yeah, she said that she does this. And because I know her and we have formed a, a, part, a relationship, then I can give her uh, business. Then another importance is that it helps you to influence others and to influence decisions. And this is where you will notice leaders, they really cultivate this. Because if you are a leader, you want to influence other people. And you also want to influence at the decision-making table. And so interpersonal skills come into play there. And it also expands your opportunity. The more you network with other people, and you can only network well if you have good interpersonal skills. The more you uh, uh, network with other people, the more it expands your networks and your opportunities. And then, so then with that in mind, how do we then develop these interpersonal skills? Because like we said, uh, I mean, this is such a, a, a crucial skill that if you, you're getting all these advantages, you'd want to know then how do we uh, develop these interpersonal skills. So I'll use a model that we often refer to as a STAR model. And STAR is an acronym. And I've, uh, I'll illustrate uh, every word of that acronym, STAR, S-T-A-R every word of it and how interpersonal skills come into play. So if you want to develop your interpersonal skill, the first one is sensitivity. And S stands for sensitivity. It means just be aware of the different needs of those around you. And one of the ways of just being aware of the different needs of those around you is by practicing active listening. If you actively listen to people, you'll hear what it is that they are saying and their needs. Remember, not two people are alike. Each person is different and will need sometimes to be treated differently. You know, or even if not to be treated differently, they will want to feel that you have heard them, that you have had their point of view. So you need to be sensitive. That's one way to develop your interpersonal skill. Be sensitive to the people around you. If you're working with a team, be sensitive to the needs around you. If you're volunteering in an organization, be sensitive. What are the needs of the people around you? Because you could be pushing for one goal and you're not achieving the goal because the rest of the team is feeling that you're not sensitive to their needs. And then T, T is for tolerance. It means in any place, the, you'll find people with different either cultural beliefs, religious beliefs. So you have to develop that tolerance. And that means you set aside your own personal beliefs so that you can objectively work with and understand the beliefs of other people. And you'll notice a big thing is that most of organizations now, they have something we call diversity and inclusion in organization. You know, it's, it's encouraged for you to be diverse and to be inclusive. You'll notice uh, there's usually lots of conversation around gender diversity. Like you're in this organization, you know, women want to feel included as much as men are included. So you need to be tolerant, you know. You need to be tolerant of other people's cultures. You'll notice that their culture is different from yours, but you need to work together. Their religion, is different from theirs. And another one that is now very rampant is the sexual. You know, their sexual beliefs are very different from, from, from other people. So some people believe in, you know, in being um, in heterosexual relationships, others don't. But you'll find that you're in the same team, you're in the same organization and you need to work together. So regardless of where, what you believe, you need to put that aside and just be tolerant of other people. That's one way of developing your interpersonal skills. Remember, we said that interpersonal skills, they are linked to 
relationships with people. So if you're developing good relationships with people, you can't have good relationships with people if you're not a tolerant person. So you need to develop that tolerance. Then A, A is for assertion. And often when you talk about being assertive, people, you'll, you'll, you'll hear lots of conversations between being assertive, you know, and, uh, you know, and coming out as arrogant. But being assertive doesn't mean that you need to be arrogant or rude to get your point across. It just means that uh, you believe in your words or you believe in the things that you are expressing and you express it firmly, but respectfully. You don't have to be arrogant and you don't have to be rude for it to be hard. Just have the guts to stand up for the ideas and the things that you believe, but express them firmly and respectfully without coming across as being arrogant or being rude. And then R is restraint. And restraint means that you have the presence of mind to stop and think before you speak or take action. This is common, especially when you're dealing with, with, with things on social media, you know, because sometimes somebody will say something and you will quickly react. There's something they say you need to press the pause button. Even sometimes you will draft that response, but you will not uh, click send fast. Give it even an hour, go back to it. And then when your anger has gone down a bit, now you can review the situation again. Uh, I, I recently saw somebody who has said uh, that uh, uh, they've come across, uh, you know, the way as you're sending emails, you have so, so many, or sometimes in your draft, you find that you have emails that you intended to respond, but didn't. And now when the, this person was reading through their drafts, which was uh, like weeks later, they were just glad that they did not press send that draft because if they would have responded to, to that, uh, to, to whatever it was using that draft, that they would have been at a situation where they overreacted or they said something momentarily out of anger and that ruined the relationship. So you have to, to, you have to exercise restraint. You have to stop yourself, think, before you speak or before you take action. Because sometimes pressing that send button could be the difference that just makes between probably you having that job and losing it, or even you having that relationship or ruining it completely. So maybe one of the things that uh, I, I just want to quickly uh, touch uh, before I tell you the opportunities that you have to exercise uh, interpersonal skills is how comes then if interpersonal skill is so important, how comes many of us have not developed it? Or what holds people back from improving or developing their interpersonal skills? And I'll just touch on four things. One, sometimes it's our belief system. Many people think that you have to be born good at communicating, at interacting with others. You know, you have to be born with great interpersonal skills and therefore they don't practice and they don't get better, which now becomes something that holds them back. But like I said, a skill is something that can be learned. Meaning, even if you're not currently good at interpersonal skills, we all have an opportunity to learn, to improve our interpersonal skills. You don't have to have been born being good at communicating uh, or having developed interpersonal skills. You can actually learn and you can practice and you can get better. Another thing that stops us is fear. You know, fear stops us from trying and learning new things or new skills. Remember where the, the story that I was saying of my time when I was a writer uh, and just thinking that, I mean, because my work speaks for myself, I don't have to interact so much with people. I mean, I just need to use my, my writing and that speaks volume. Then I don't need to interact with others. I don't need to, in, to develop or improve my interpersonal skills. But actually at the bottom of that is that I was afraid of just trying something that was different. And it was until I was faced with a situation where at one point at my work, I was required to pitch for business, you know, to pitch for business of writing. 
And that is where I learned that I needed to improve my interpersonal skills because without that, it was difficult for me to stand before a group of three or four CEOs and tell them, you know, do a presentation and say, this is what I'm pitching for. This is my idea. This is how uh, I'd like you to fund the idea and so forth. So fear of failure sometimes also stops us from trying to learn new things or new skills, you know? So that hinders us from improving or developing our interpersonal skills. So sometimes you are afraid or even you're afraid that you will try and fail, but you keep at it. Once you begin, you keep at it. You won't always get it right the first time. And that's the thing. The very first time I had an opportunity to speak uh, publicly, I can tell you it was also, I was sweating. My hands were sweating. It was difficult because it was the first time, but with time you improve, you become better. Sometimes even when you tell that to people, they don't believe how far you've come because they think that now you're great at communicating, then it means you are always like this, but that's a lie. And then the third one, many people don't improve their interpersonal skills because they have a mistaken belief that they are good at communication because communication is all common sense. And you will, in my career, I have tended to, to see this a lot. Even sometimes uh, when you're pitching for business, people say, ah, you just want to do communication for us, but communication is common sense. Anybody can do it. And then you realize, no, it's not. So that's a belief, a mistaken belief that good communication is all common sense. It's not all common sense. Don't assume that uh, people, people know it. You can actually not know and you need to learn. And then the assumption is that we know you know that assumption that ah, me, I, me, I know interpersonal skills. What is there to learn? There's a quote that I came across that uh, I found really interesting and just, it makes me uh, uh, see uh, why this assumption is false and why we need feedback. Feedback is the breakfast of champions. Don't assume that you know or that you're good at interpersonal skills. Ask for feedback. If you're in situations where you've made a, a presentation, ask for feedback. How was it from the audience? If you are giving a presentation to, you know, even your teammates, ask them, how was that presentation? You know, if you are speaking as a leader or as a team leader on behalf of people and you are speaking to the CEO uh, and maybe the, the other team was part of it, they were just seated there, but you were the one who was articulating the issues. When you're done or after you've left, ask your teammate, how did I articulate that, you know? Feedback is the breakfast of champions. You can't assume that you know. So ask for feedback. It will help you grow. It will help you learn. And it will help you identify the areas where you're weak that you need to improve on. All right. So just a few uh, scenarios of where or how uh, you can be able to, develop, to improve yourself. It, uh, if you are, even if you're in school, Internships are a great opportunity to start building your interpersonal skills in addition to technical skills. So of course, what happens is that maybe for many degrees, you'll be told before you graduate, you are required to do an internship. So yes, you'll go to do the internship because you want to develop your technical skills. You went to school for engineering or you went to school to do medicine and now you're, you have to go through internship where you go and practice that skill. But right there in the internship, is an opportunity for you to build on your interpersonal skills because you're not working alone. You'll be put in a department with people, you know, and it means that you have to interact with these people. So right there is an opportunity to develop your interpersonal skills. Volunteer opportunities are also uh, places where you can build on your interpersonal skills, whether it is in church, you know, it doesn't matter where you're volunteering, whether it's an organization, whether it is in church, what, wherever it is, whether it is in a school, in a, in a university, it doesn't matter. Wherever you're volunteering, even in the community, you're interacting with other people. And right there is an opportunity to build your interpersonal skills. Another way is that you can actually look for uh, the opportunities. If you're a student, sometimes you'll be given group work and then one person will be told to give a presentation volunteer to be the one to do the presentation. 
Because right there, you start building or practicing public speaking, which is part of interpersonal skills. Hmm? So it, the, the, the opportunities, give a presentation. Sometimes even when you've interned or you've uh, volunteered or you've gone through a training, give us some volunteer to give a summary of how your training experience has been. Just that opportunity to speak and summarize in front of five, 10 people helps you to practice your public speaking, helps you to know how to articulate, how to interact with people, you know. If you're in a team, volunteer to be the one to give the, the, a speech on behalf of the team, a vote of thanks, closing remarks, you know, because slowly you're trying to build those interpersonal skills. You can also volunteer to lead a team or to lead a project. And just because you're leading the team or leading the project doesn't mean that you're doing everything. It means that you will need to coordinate with the team. And you can only coordinate well in the team if you have good interpersonal skills. Over lunch hour or break time, if you're in an organization, don't be those people who close themselves, you know, go to their corner over lunch and they spend the whole hour by themselves. Interact with others. Even if somebody is in a different department, just express interest. Like, I've really wanted to understand what exactly you do. And right there is an opportunity for this person to express what it is that they do in the organization or the nature of their work. And what happens is that as they express that, they will turn back and ask you, and you? And then you're trying to build there. As you're interacting, you're building a relationship there. You're building a network. That is somebody who you probably had never interacted with before. And now right there, you have an opportunity to do so. And then uh, the last one, you can ask for feedback from your peers, from your supervisors, if you're in an organization, from your team leader, ask for feedback. You know, when you have led a, a team or, or a project, uh, you know, when you've given a vote of dance on behalf of others or given a presentation, just ask for feedback. You know, ask them, how was it? How did you find it? Which areas do you think I could improve? You ask for feedback and be ready to listen and act on it. At the end of the day, interpersonal skills with practice and being intentional, it means that you can improve and you can be great at these skills. Remember, like I said, 59% of hiring managers make the final decision. You know, when they're coming, when they're deciding on who to bring on, but they make the final decision based on interpersonal skills. So that is how important it is. So if you need it, either to improve, to grow in your organization, to get promotions, to be hired, it means you have to be good at it. So learn it. You all have an opportunity to learn because it is a learned skill. Nobody, you know, nobody was born uh, being great at interpersonal skills. People cultivate and learn it. So with that, I've come to the end of my presentation. So I'll open the uh, I'll open the floor for for Q and A, just in case there's uh, there are questions that maybe have arisen from the presentation, or you know if there are any questions maybe based on your personal experiences, I'd be happy to answer. Anyone? Question? Yes, please. Um. You said you were uh, you were shy while while you were working as a editor. Was it an editor? As a writer. As a writer, yeah. So um, my question is, how 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 did you overcome that, and how long did it take you? And, okay. Uh, Sorry. Another question. Uh huh. Um, you said introverts. There is there is this thing mental blocks. Yes. Could you, could you have an idea of how somebody can overcome the mental blocks? 
Okay. All right. So I'll begin with the first one based on my experience as a writer, how I overcame the shyness. To be honest, I was thrown in the deep end. Like for the longest time, I'm just the one behind the desk, behind the computer writing and giving my work to another editor and didn't really need to interact with anybody, you know, anybody outside of my, my circles until when I was drawn in the deep end where I was told that I need to now be pitching ideas, you know, to organizations. We are calling them advertorials. I need to pitch ideas to organizations in form of adver advertorials and for me to get business and to do their stories. So I was literally thrown in the deep end. I did not have a choice, you know? And so what happened, I remember, of course, my very first time to make that presentation, I was sweating, my voice was shaky because that's what happens. And uh, over time I learned that the more I, I do the presentation, the better. So one of the things I used to do is that before we did, uh, before I went to present to the client a pitch, in my team, we were about four writers. So before I went to, to give a presentation to a client of a pitch for the business, for, the, for writing for them the business, I would first do the presentation before that team of four people, you know? And then as I'm doing the, the presentation, they'll be able to come back to me with feedback. You know, here, this, this doesn't sell. If you say this, it doesn't sell. You need to say it like this. So the team would help me, that team of four people were just able to give me their feedback and to help me from the, what I'm presenting. What do they pick? How do they feel I'm presenting? Do I sound confident? If, if, they, were the, if they were the ones who are the client, would they buy the idea? You know, and just from that feedback is how I was able to improve. So I was a writer, I think for about, I was a writer for about three years before I got a promotion to the next, um, to the next stage. So that tells you, it took me about three years to really uh, get to the place where I could feel confident. But the thing is learning never stops. Even now, when, I'm, when I left employment and started doing my own consultancies, I quickly learned that I'm the one to pitch business to the client, I'm the one to follow up, I'm the one to pitch, to, to negotiate for, for my pay. And I can tell you for sure, one of my biggest hurdles was negotiating for what I thought I needed to be paid. That was difficult, that I could pitch an idea very well. But now when the client says, so how much should we pay for that? I would freeze. I was unable you know, to quote that. And it took a lot of coaching. This one literally took a, a coach. I went through a life coach who taught me how to, you know, a, a life coaching session who after several sessions where I was taught how to articulate. And one of the things I learned is that it, is, it was difficult for me to quote the figure because I did not believe that I deserved to be paid what I thought I needed to be paid. So it, it shows you already that there was also a mental block on my mind, which comes to the, to the second question where somebody um, asked, uh, you know, that uh, as if, especially if you're an introvert or you're shy, how do you overcome the mental blocks? And a practical example for me was before I went to see a client, I would rehearse it, I would rehearse what it is that I want to say. Because the more I said it, the more I started believing it. And by the time I presented myself to the client, I could say it off head. Because mental blocks just means that your belief system, what it is that you believe in your mind and what it is that you're saying, they're not matching, you know? So maybe let's, let's assume I'm a writer and I want to, to start uh, bidding for business and I want them to be paying me 50,000 shillings. But in my head, I feel like 50,000 shillings is a lot. How will I convince anyone to pay me that? Hmm? So what happens is that the more I started telling, speaking to myself and telling myself, you're a great writer, you bring value to the table, you deserve 
you know, to be paid 50,000 shillings and more for writing content, the more I started believing it. And by the time I got to clients, it was easier. So for those mental blocks, for sure, it started by first speaking to myself. So that first I removed that mental block of thinking that I don't deserve or that this money is too much. I won't get a client who is willing to pay that. So mental blocks, my practical example was literally just that, beginning by first speaking to myself before I could, uh, I could uh, present the, the information to the client. And as I spoke to myself, I started believing that I am worthy to be paid of that. So with time, it's now become easier. Sometimes now it has gotten to the point where, of course you have a threshold of how much it is that you charge. So if I get a client who is unwilling to charge that, I'm who is unwilling to pay that, I'm willing to walk away. But I can tell you for sure it has been a process. I was very much, one of the mental blocks also was that I was afraid if I say no to what the client is offering, I'm going to be so broke that I will not be able to pay my bill. So it's better to take anything than nothing. That was a mental block in my mind. But the moment I broke that mental block and realized that actually when people see value, they're willing to pay for it, then it has now reached a point where I can say, no, no, uh, this is, you know, I'll negotiate. This is the lowest I'm willing to go in, in terms of this bid. If you're not able to offer that, uh, I'm afraid, but uh, I cannot be able to take this task and be willing to walk away. But for sure, it has taken time it has taken lots of practice, lots of believing in myself before I got there. It's not, it's not one of those things that you wake up tomorrow and just uh, get over it. So yeah, that would be my advice with the mental blocks. I hope I've answered you. Please let me know in the chat or you can unmute and just say if, uh, if you feel I've answered you. Yeah, you've answered me, thank you. All right, great can see a comment from Patricia. Thank you for an educative presentation. I've learned a lot and I now know how to manage and improve my interpersonal skills. Great, I'm happy that I was of, of help to you. Any other question? Would there be anybody with another question? Katile, I Hello. think there are, I think there are no other questions unless um, are there questions I don't know. Now, from my side, uh, I I really understood the topic very well, and I've really learned a lot. And I don't think I have a question with that. I'm really satisfied with the presentation. Okay, great. I'm happy to share my presentation. I could email it to Katile and she can share it with the team. Uh, maybe somebody needs to refer to things that I said. I'm happy to share my presentation with you. So you can, you'll get it, I'll, I'll just send it on email to Katile. She can distribute it to the rest of the team. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, maybe from Jacob and says, I know says he joined late. I'm sorry for that. And the others who are joining and then are logging off. Maybe it was about internet network. Maybe Jacob, if you can unmute, you can maybe say some a comment from the presentation. Is he online? Okay, I think, I, think he's, problem. I think he's not able to unmute, but I'm sure he learned something. Actually, from me, I've, uh, my takeaway home is that 
you don't have to have these interpersonal skills, but you can learn them and then and then you can grow grow your inter, interpersonal skills to a point where it will be sufficient for you now to be effective when you are communicating. So I think with that, if there's no question, I appreciate you so much, Esther, for that wonderful session. And maybe we can hear from Denise the last word, maybe from the participants as a comment to end the session. Um, hi, I think. I think the session has been very enlightened full. And uh, as Katila said, we are thankful to Esther for your time and for the session. And may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. It was such a great pleasure to do this presentation. I'm happy to come on board again on, uh, you know, once I'm requested. Uh, it's always a pleasure to share what it is that I have learned over the years. And I'm happy to share that with you. So thank you. Thank you even for your attendance and uh, for listening through the session and for all the questions. Thank you. Thank you thank so you much for inviting me. Thank you so much for being patient with us. And I think for the participants, if maybe anyone doesn't, I don't have their email, they can share with me. And then I will share the recordings and maybe the presentation after you share. So thank you so much. And I'm really humbled. All right. Thank you so much. So with that said, I guess I can say it's a good evening. Thank you, guys. And uh, have a good night. Good night. Have a good evening, too. All right. Bye-bye.